On this episode of History Hunters, Jeff and Sarah visit the rugged scenery of the Alabama hills located near Lone Pine, California, to check out the filming locations of hundreds of cowboy westerns. The area has long been a mecca of film producers since the inception of the movie industry. Jeff will detail the specific filming sites of such classic movies as Gunga Din, Joe Kidd, Westward Ho, and The Great Race. Jeff and Sarah make their way up Whitney Portal Road west of Highway 395 and the town of Lone Pine. So we are in the Alabama Hills. Now if you've never watched a Western film, you probably don't recognize this place, but hundreds of films were shot here from the 1930s, 1940s, 1950s, 60s, and even up to modern days. And we are actually at the site where they filmed Gunga Den in 1939. Right here is a marker telling all about the film. The elaborate set that was built for the movie that included Cary Grant and Sam Jeffy and Douglas Fairbanks Jr. was shot down here in this ravine. It's a little bit off of the Horseshoe Road over here. The main filming is over in this area, way over the hill there. We're gonna go over there. Sarah is way up there. There's a bunch of caves up here. Caves up here. Yeah. <sighs> Nothing but boulders around here. There's our little goat down there. This area has attracted just an immense amount of stars. Just off the top of my head, let me start with John Wayne, Randolph Scott, Gabby Hayes, Roy Rogers, Gene Autry. Uh, we're talking about Tim Holt, he was here, Cary Grant, Douglas Fairbanks Jr., Victor McLaglin, and Gregory Peck. Uh, just about anybody you can think of. I spotted something down here, I'm not sure what it is. part of the car. There's another piece of probably a car over here. This road back here, John Wayne came rambling down on his horse in the movie Westward Ho. I think it was sometime in the 1930s, but imagine this as a dirt road. It would have been a perfect spot for Bunch of horses traveling right through here. I believe a lot of the films were shot probably in May or June when there was still snow up on the mountains because you watch a lot of those old films and there's a lot of snow on the beaks up there. So yeah, right in here is where Gunga Den was shot. I think right about where our car is, they have this massive set a very elaborate set that they built in 1938. And once they were done filming the movie with Cary Grant, they tore down the set. They didn't leave anything here. I understand that there's some things here, some pieces of wood and such that were left over from the set, but I'm not sure if it's still here. So this plaque here looks like it was dedicated by Roy Rogers, 1990 by E. Clampus Vitus. It says movie flat since 1920, hundreds of movies and TV episodes, including Gunka Den, How the West Was Won, Kuiper Rifles, Bengal Lancers, and High Sierra, along with The Lone Ranger and Bonanza. Again, it says this plaque was dedicated by Roy Rogers, whose first starring feature was filmed here in 1938. How's that for Hollywood history? 
This boulder that I'm going to show you over here is a scene where Tyrone Power and Susan Hayward buried Edgar Buchanan in a film. It was in the movie Rawhide. It almost looks like an eyeball. Yeah, right here on this very spot is where they buried Edgar Buchanan in the film. All right, back to the station. Well, maybe they want to say some words. Well, let them get it over with. You take that shovel and get going. Well, it ain't fit to walk away. I when... said get going. Well, go on. Go on, say the words. May the Lord grant you everlasting rest and peace. Come on, what are you doing? Preaching a sermon? Where's my pistol? Must be behind the water trough. So what I'm going to call the eyeball rock or the rawhide burial site was also used in the filming of How the West Was Won with Gregory Peck. There's a scene of him actually shot right here. And you can see that little rock in the picture. These mountains also are in the background. I'll try to get in the same position where the film crew was. It was approximately right here. Or right here. And Jack Elam is on a horse over here as he was overseeing the burial. He was a, just a nasty character. Audie Murphy shot a number of westerns just right over here between these rocks. Another piece of Hollywood history I'm going to point out to you right up here in this rock. John Wayne actually stood on that rock right there in a, believe, 1929 film called The Oregon Trail. Wayne stood up there with a cannon on wheels and they built this tall scaffold for the film crew so they could film Wayne atop the rock. I understand that the film is now lost so nobody can actually watch the Oregon Trail anymore, but there's a lot of stills that show Wayne up there. I'm gonna to try to go up there and stand where John Wayne stood. John Wayne walked right through here to gain access to this rock and I can tell you it's fairly fairly easy for him to get up here. I'm sure this is how he did it right here. Jumped over here. I'm gonna try to do it without scraping myself up. <clears throat> John Wayne stood right here. That's the view he would have saw. Apparently in that scene he was firing a cannon off in that direction over there. Okay, so this rock back here was a rock that was used in the 1965 film, The Great Race, with Natalie Wood. And I thought it would be fun to have Sarah... Reenact a pose? Yeah, actually sit exactly where Natalie Wood sat. Okay, are you gonna show me? Yes. Okay, so she sat right on top of this rock here. I believe in the movie she was waiting for Tony Curtis to come by. Sitting on this one? Yeah. Or up? Leg, legs down. So I'm going to try to go exactly where the camera was and see if we can line this up to the film right about here. Natalie Wood was sitting there. She had a parasol though. She's over there laughing. Yeah, great race. Shot right here. I think so. She may have had her legs down that way. Yeah. How do you feel? Was it comfortable for her? Kind of like granite like huh but it's not smooth yeah it's very bumpy and hurts and over off in this direction a lot of other western movie set type scenery if you've watched the 1972 movie joe kidd starring clint eastwood 
There's a scene in which he's being shot at from a sniper. The sniper was up here. Clint Eastwood was out here, probably in the middle of this section right here, eyeballing this guy. And the trouble there. Yeah, this is where this scene was filmed, kid. right here. So I brought you to a different section of the Alabama Hills, and this relates to the 1938 filming of Gunga Den. There was an old uh, rickety type of bridge that they had to cross. And uh, as soon as they crossed this bridge, an elephant was actually playing with the bridge. It was gonna totally make it collapse. But let me show you something. The actual scene that shows this very deep crevice right here was kind of done to some movie magic and a glass plate. So the bridge extended from this point over to this point. And they made it look like there was a deep chasm here when there really wasn't one. They were just uh, maybe six to eight feet off the ground. But I want to show you that there are some remnants here of the bridge that they created that probably wouldn't be able to do this today. But as you can see right here, they use some cement. There's some nails still here. Here's kind of a, shows you where the wood was. What they did here, I believe, was to anchor a fake boulder to this face to help support the bridge and the elephant for the scene. Let me show you over here. Oh, here's, here's some additional. Look at this. This is also from that particular scene. Up here, I'll climb up there and show you. <laughs> this is probably was drilled in to hold the bridge as an anchor. I understand that they brought an elephant up here and here, this is a good view of it. You can see how they did this. There you go. There's a perspective on the Gunga Den Bridge. So I've got it figured out. I figured out how they got the elephant up here. Let me give you the perspective. The ramp went right here. There's pieces of it here. There's pieces of it there. Pieces of it there. And way down there, you see that. The ramp went right up here, so the elephant came up this direction right here. Makes sense. There's more cement there. Cement there. So the elephant would have just walked right up there. I'm actually going to have to watch Gunga Din now. I've never watched it, but after having been here, I think it would be kind of interesting to see how the elephant played into the scene. Okay, so now we're gonna try to find the place where Gene Autry filmed the Mule Train. There's still a cement pond. If you remember the movie, which probably nobody's seen. I've seen it. I used to watch it with my kids. They thought it was funny because there was a song in there ah, called Mule Train. And it's kind of a catchy little tune. But in the movie, Gene Autry makes a cement pond to capture water and he gets, get, I guess he's going to make money with it somehow with the ranchers because it's out in the desert and there's no water and then somebody sabotages it and it runs dry there's a big controversy about that, a big battle over it looks like I found the watering hole from the movie Meal Train I believe it was filmed in 1950 Meal Train <laughs> And this is the integral part of the movie. They left the cement from the movie right here. This was made strictly for the Gene Autry movie. I remember watching this film with my kids and they would sing Mule Train, yeehaw, Mule Train. Yeah, sorry I can't sing very well. When I saw the movie way back, probably 20 years ago or more, 30, I kind of knew it was in this area. Richard Boone also dipped into this watering hole for an episode of Half Gun Will Travel. 
both the actors are dead. But an artifact from that movie is still here. I just think that's incredible. It's got to be at least 70, 80 years old. Cement held up pretty good. Uh, I don't know why they didn't dismantle it. Probably because, uh, well, that would have been a big job. A lot of broken glass around here. Please do me a favor and never throw any glass anywhere because I'm constantly picking it up. We had entered this canyon here and I wasn't sure we were going to find what I was looking for. It's a pretty narrow area of boulders as you can kind of see around me. Very tight for the vehicle. We tried to take Sarah's vehicle up there and there's nothing doing. It's pretty steep and slippery but I wanted to bring you here because this is the famous Gene Autry rock that I was looking for. Gene Autry posed up there with his horse. Now you know it from a different angle, and I'll take you up there and show you, but from here it looks like it's straight up rock. Now if you watch the movie Django, in which slaves were being driven through a rocky area such as this, you may recognize the fact that they came right down this area, Jamie Foxx included. He was included in the beginning scenes. Try to get in the same position where Gene Autry and his horse were photographed. I'm pretty stoked to think that uh, Gene Autry himself was right here. You can almost get lost in here. I'm serious. It's it's a pretty restricted area as far as getting your vehicles through here. And uh, there were a ton of films shot just in this area. You just gotta know where to look for them. It's a very distinguishable rock. It almost looks like a, a whale sticking up. I, mean, I saw a scene of Half Gun Will Travel shot here with Denver Pyle and Richard Boone. Let your mind carry you back over 60 years ago when Hopalong Cassidy himself rode past this rock in search of the bad guys. So what do you think of all this? It's a bunch of rocks. You like rocks? Like we're not scamp scampering on them. Oh. No. So that alien type head in this area was used for Randy Scott's Hangman's Knot in 1952. In this area right here. And I want to show you something over here. This canyon right here is where John Wayne rode down and was ambushed in Westward Hove in 1935. And there were some gunmen up there on top of those ridges waiting for John Wayne to ride right down here. Perfect place for an ambush. Just imagine John Wayne riding down this canyon right here. So I'm sure that John Wayne hung out in this area right here waiting for the director to say action and began riding this direction towards the camera. There's a famous person right here in this car with her feet hanging out. It's Sarah Evers of History Hunters, who's not feeling really like hunting a lot of history today. We've been on a long vacation, and you're Swimming tired. With otters. Swimming with otters. You like that kind of stuff, and you tolerate this kind of stuff. Yeah. So this canyon behind me where Sarah's car is sitting is otherwise known as Lone Ranger Canyon. I think Lone Ranger kind of was born in this area. On film, there was an ambush scene 
shot down here. And from here, it looks like maybe there's no way out of that canyon, but there is. So somewhere in this area, uh, Hopalong Cassidy was filming Silent Conflict in 1948. So while I can't specifically find that site, you can rest assured that Hopalong Cassidy was very familiar with these rocks in this area. I kind of find it ironic that Hopalong Cassidy still appears on producer's milk long after he died. I think he died in 72, somewhere around there. But they're still selling it. I mean, kids are probably drinking milk. And they go, who the heck's Hoppy? So we're at the end of this canyon uh, where this looped road goes and Sarah's over there in a car and I believe this right here is a scene for Thunder Mesa there was a shootout here with Hopalong Cassidy probably in the 1940s and over here I want to take you to a place where Lee Marvin and Randolph Scott filmed a movie so in 1956 seven men from now was shot right here it involved a scene with Randolph Scott and Lee Marvin, the gunfight scene here. And right over here, uh, the camera was walking as Lee Marvin walked right across that rock. He encountered Randolph Scott, who comes out from that rock right there. And he confronts Lee Marvin, who's out here. And there's a Wells Fargo strong box between these two roads. Lee Marvin is facing from this direction, facing this camera, and he confronts Randy Scott. So let's just see what that the heck it looks like behind here where Randolph Scott was hiding. The legendary cowboy, Randolph Scott, stood right here as he entered the scene to confront Lee Marvin back there. Quite often when they film movies, they look nothing like, you know, nothing makes sense. They might be in this scene somewhere and another part of the country in the next scene, so, yeah. Two movies shot here that we know of. There could have possibly been a lot more. Got a really rough area right here of the road. Would not recommend coming back here unless you're a four-wheel driver pickup. Recently, uh, I saw a pickup commercial of a pickup racing through this area, and I immediately recognized the Alabama Hills. And I tried to tell you about it, huh? Remember that? <laughs> probably wasn't paying attention. Uh, probably not. I forgot to mention that Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle shot a scene out here, and I think it was back there. There's a picture of him. Of course, he was one of the great silent film stars whose career ended in tragedy in San Francisco. An alleged rape of an actress. His career was destroyed. I was telling you about Downey. Robert da was it Robert Downey Jr.? Robert Downey Jr. What did he? What was the movie? Iron Man. Yeah, I think that mountain was in the background. I don't know. If that's Whitney or. Williamson. Yeah, he filmed out here too. Robert Downey Jr. Now they, they don't obviously film out here very much anymore. Not like they did back in the cowboy heyday. After scrambling across all these rocks and these roads, some of them pretty bad, I finally found the Arastra, which is one of the props here that's been left by Hollywood. Harry Morgan and Gregory Peck were here filming a movie here in this very rostra. And a rostra is actually a mill for grinding gold or silver ore, typically where a mill was used. The structure actually dates back to 1936. Errol Flynn filmed Kim here in 1950. But a lot of people think that this Arastra was built for Yellow Sky, but actually dates back to 1936 
when the actor Rex Bell filmed West of Nevada here. In the Gregory Peck film, there was a fake mine up there. I'm going to take you up there and show you where that was. There's a scene in which the Apaches come up on them suddenly, and the actors come running down here, and they hide inside of this little structure here. It looks like that old man wasn't as loony as we figured. Yeah. Let us dig his gold out for him. And then his Indians show up just when we find it. Maybe those folks are worse off than we are. Oh, shut up, you jape. They told us them Apaches was friends of theirs, didn't they? Somebody wrote 1888 here, but that's not the case. Looks like they've shot the heck out of that thing. There's the beautiful mountains up there. I'll take you up there and show you the fake mine that Gregory Peck used in the film Yellow Sky. So it was right here where there was a fake mine. And I've been told this rock was actually brought in for the filming of the movie because if you'll notice, it doesn't appear anywhere else. It's kind of concentrated in this area. They had a fake mine shaft right here, but there are no mines in this area, so it's all Hollywood magic. Gregory Peck would have been right here. Apaches. All the great Western film stars have passed away. Of course, Gregory Peck has passed away, but this definitely brings you a little closer to him. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that Gregory Peck stood here on this sloping rock in front of me in a scene out of Yellow Sky, seen here. I told you to meet me behind them rocks. You didn't do it. Well, you see, dude, here. I'm giving the orders around here. We'll talk about that later. Right now, we want to know what those Indians are up to. The old man told him to move out. We are in this beautiful area exploring for history hunters and we came across these metal mylar balloons, a detriment to the environment and wildlife and the beauty of our surroundings. It could have landed in those power lines and created major electrical issues for people around here. It could have sparked and started a fire. So somewhere close by us, Walter Brennan was nearly hung from a high tree until Kirk Douglas came along to rescue him in The Great Divide, shot in 1951. I believe it's where Ansel Adams took a famous picture of the mountains up this way. I believe it's this section right here. And over here, I believe they had a home for the movie Yellow Sky. I told, just told you about Yellow Sky. This is bizarre. It's like this whole thing was ground off here. Let me see here. I believe this is where the house was for Yellow Sky. Anybody home? A very young Ann Baxter gives him a very unfriendly greeting. What about me coming in for a minute? Stay where you are. What you scared of? Nothing. It's one o'clock and I think Sarah's getting kind of hungry. We know there's a Carl's Jr. back back there in Lone Pine and we're gonna go probably have lunch. One last shot of where Ansel Adams took a famous picture of the Eastern Sierra mountain range right here. I forgot to mention Gary Cooper obviously has been here as well. We couldn't find the rock where he shot his movie or at least a couple of movies but it's over in that area over there. I hope that you enjoyed this episode of History Hunters, one in which we visited Alabama Hills, and I hope you learned a lot about some of the westerns that were shot out here. Maybe next time you're watching a western, you will definitely know what you see in the background as Alabama Hills. 
by what I've shown you today. Anyway, I enjoyed it. I've been looking forward to this visit for a couple of months and I think we hit most of the places I wanted to see. So, hey, I really appreciate it. If you like this channel, I would hope that you would hit the subscribe button and check out further future episodes of History Hunters.